So Michael Chandler came out and he said, given enough time, he is convinced he could get Khabib to come out of retirement, right? And you just got to throw your hands up and go, what are we doing here? Michael Chandler is a former champion of the world who, by the way, is undefeated in a new organization, who, by the way, has never been less than a co-main event, who, by the way, is on the cusp of fighting for a championship in that organization. Okay, this is a star. This is a guy who matters. Why would you make such a foolish statement? Given enough to... The only one to keep their hands clean in this whole Khabib saga, the only one to not get a little bit of this dirt bomb exposed is George St. Pierre. Because George St. Pierre on day one accepted the retirement. He accepted the retirement and wished him well. There is no dialogue going out, out there that, oh, that fight should have happened and Khabib would have smoked him. It doesn't exist. But it doesn't exist because George didn't allow for it too. He accepted the resignation. And he said, I hope you have a wonderful life. And he's never spoke about him again. The guys that keep talking about, look, thirsty, did we ne learn nothing? Right. Jan Blahovich, who I realize has won us all over. Jan's a very cool guy and we like him. But do we not understand the mistake that he made the night that he beat Reyes? We were all teasing him for months. He beats Reyes and he calls out John Jones. He called out a guy who had just left the division. Then when he realized how bad that idea was, he called out Daniel Cormier, who not only left the division, he left the sport. And nobody did another interview with Blahovich for a period of time, and he was the sitting champion of the world because it was such a blunder. Now, I don't bring that to you to talk about Blahovich. I bring that to you to talk about a mistake and the adverse to the mistake that was St. Pierre, which is to accept the resignation and send him on his way, wishing him well. If you're a guy in the division, particularly Michael Chandler, who, by the way, you want to talk about guys that have a legitimate shot, I mean, the most legitimate shot of beating Khabib, Michael Chandler comes to mind. Given enough time, I could talk him out every time. First off, why would you want to? What does Khabib have that you possibly want? It sounds like a damn hard night out there that isn't going to pay as well as you think because the North American fans not only aren't Khabib fans, they've never been Khabib fans. They are now pretending to be Khabib fans after Khabib is retired. I've never quite seen anything like this. The North American fans are pretending we really want to see Khabib. You didn't want to see Khabib when you could see Khabib. So stop with all that. But there's a part of the world where he's a really big... I understand all of these things, but stop with all that. Accept the resignation like George did. Accept the fact that the guy's gone and use that in your favor and say, well, of course he's gone because now I'm here. He enjoyed being undefeated. I would have taken the belt off the son of a bitch. I mean, there's so many different ways to play it than acting as though you hope he comes back because acting as though you're the guy that could get it back, you're doing that because you think it comes with a paycheck. Let me surprise you guys with something. It doesn't. There's one red panty night and it's not Khabib. It's still Connor. In all fairness, just so you understand that, you fellow 55-pounders that are coming out and choosing to talk about a guy who you're not going to get anything with except for an ass whipping. There's still one king of the mountain. His name is still Conor McGregor. And if you're a 55-pounder and you're trying to align yourself with a make-believe fight that is not going to pay, I don't know who told you that it does. It has never been some great business day to fight Khabib. It's been an ass-kicking to fight Khabib, a humiliating one. By the way, the greatest thing that you can do if you're in that division and you want to be remembered is stay the hell away from him. But if you attach your, given enough time. <laughs> what the, what the hell is that? Sure. How much time do you need? But so we can sell, I'm going to need a hundred years. Okay. Yeah, man. Give it enough time. I'm sure you could, or I'm sure that you couldn't. I'm sure you guys can argue about it with your canes at the retirement home. What's the difference? Quit associating with him. You should be making a demand that they take the belt off the son of a bitch. I have no idea why you're letting a guy go run around with your belt all over the world, everywhere, he, everywhere except where he says he's going to be, which is his village in Dagestan. He's anywhere but home. Oh, by the way, he's doing it with your belt, making a mockery of it. Demand they take the belt back to start with. Khabib wants to return. He can return for the belt that he never lost, and he can take you on if you're said champion. But this is the way the story goes, okay? I don't write the story. The story's been around for years. I just studied the story. And keep in mind what I'm telling you, because the only guy to come out of this thing unscathed was George St. Pierre, who, by the way, speaking of the GOAT, had some advice for Connor. 
And St. Pierre said, here's the problem that Connors ran into. And I know this because I ran into it myself. When you make a pile of money, you lo no longer need to fight. So you lose the want to fight. And so now you have to recreate what used to be your reality. Your reality used to be, I need this, and therefore I want it. And let's hope my need and want is greater than that of my opponent, because eventually our wills are going to be tested. But because that is no longer the reality, you have to create it. You have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations. Now, George is right. How you duplicate that look, tough. That's a tough one. I don't know that it's just packing up and going to some training camp and staying somewhere that's a little bit inconvenient. I, I don't really know how that benefits you greater than having some of the niceties and making sure you're in the room on time and leaving after buddy else which is what got you there in the first place. I don't fully know, but George also didn't elaborate on the thought, but it was very nice advice that George offered to Connor. And I will tell you, I saw this play out in my own life one time. Brandon Slay, one of the great American wrestlers ever, but Brandon Slay captured an Olympic gold medal at a very young age. He was like 25 years old. And he's the Olympic champion in the sport that he loves. And now he doesn't have a whole lot of choice. Do I want to go win another Olympic championship? Because if I stick around and I do anything shy of that, I've then failed. Or do I retire now? And this is what Slay was faced with. So first he said, I'm going to retire. I've already achieved everything. And then he came back and said, no, I'm not. And he started getting workouts in. Slay told me that being in the room and having to catch the guy in front of you. Now, that's a conditioning drill. If you guys aren't familiar with it, you're running sprints. Somebody's in front of you. Catch the guy in front of you. And Slay said, I used to always want to catch that guy. And now all of a sudden, at the end of practice, when I'm a little bit tired, I'm already the Olympic champion. I'm already recognized. I don't want to catch him. Okay, go climb that rope. Get up that rope until it hurts. Climb the rope a couple of times. And Slay said, he goes, you know, I really want to climb that rope. And he realized that he'd already achieved it, but he also didn't really want to do some of the sacrifices and struggles that he'd already been through. And you know what? I get it. It was a level of success that most people will never know. And this was the mindset of a guy who had done it. And Brandon Slay said, you know what? I didn't want to do it again. I already did. I don't want to do it again. Who could fault him? You want to know the answer? Stories 21 years ago. You want to know who faulted him? In 21 years, try nobody. The same situation that George is going through. Here's your hat. What's your hurry? To Khabib. The same thing that Blahovic should have done as it pertained to John Jones and Daniel Cormier. And quite frankly, Blahovic has fixed it. And he's also won us over. In all fairness, right? I feel like I'm a little hard on the champ. Blahovic done a great job. But he also hasn't made those same mistakes twice. And now I'm watching guys who want to lure Khabib back. For what? And I'll answer the question. I'll answer the question. You think that's the big payday. It's not. Allow me to be the one to tell you. Not only is it not, it never has been. It's still Connor. That's still the guy. If, if this is what you're after, that's still the guy. And as for the other guy who only hands out ass whippings, if you can stay away from him, just stay away from him.